Hello and welcome to Deepdale Podcast. It's the run-up to Deepdale Festival and we always sit down and chat with a various different artists who are playing at the festival. This year we have about 16 or 20 different artists that I'm going to catch up with so this will end up being a four maybe even five part podcast with lots of different artists talking about their creative process and gigging live and us playing some samples of their music. This first one, I'm talking to Polly Pulsma, to Matt Watson, to Phoebe Austin, Lewis Buxton from Toast Poetry. So enjoy the listen, and we hope you'll come back and listen to the other parts of this Deepdale Festival special podcast. Skies all open wide, geese go high and over. Oh, now you're a beachcomber, a fist full of sand fire. See, lavender. See. chatting with a Polly and I've just checked how to pronounce her surname and it's Paulsma. So you uh, you basically uh, leave out the second you. So if any of you are coming to the festival and need to know how to pronounce that, or you're going to see her performing one of her many gigs over the next 30 days with Catherine Williams, then that's the way p- to pronounce it. And I'm really, well, we're, we're all really excited because Polly is playing on the Thursday in the Brick Barn and it's going to be a fantastic, fantastic evening at the Deepdale Festival. And thank you so much for joining me on the Deepdale podcast, Polly. It's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's great. Great to be here, Jason. In- po- uh, Polly is surrounded by lots of um, musical equipment because she's about to go online and do a, a live uh, stream for her um, her followers. So uh, that's very exciting. Yeah, I've, I actually uh, I learned how to do this live streaming thing during lockdown like so many artists we were all kind of cut off at the knees by uh lockdown and lots of gigs got cancelled and postponed and so I, I kind of figured out I've got this little shed you see where I I do a lot of recording down here so we trailed an ethernet cable through the mud and, uh, <laughs> and and I quite quickly got my head around all sorts of weird bits of technology and sometimes it's a bit frustrating when you're trying to emote and you're but you're you know you're everything's crashed which happened a few times but slowly slowly got used to it and now I just I really love live streaming and I didn't really want to stop after everything opens up again I think it's really complimentary it goes well with I love gigging there's nothing like humans and music in a room and that lovely smell of beer and I just I love I love touring and I love gigs so much but I I equally really love live streams I think especially for acoustic music there's something I think when people are listening to in in acoustic live venues, often there's this there's quite a big pressure to be quiet. Yeah, and there's also or there's a really loud murmur, and you often miss bits. There is that, but if people are if the hush police are out and you know everyone's quite quiet, the audience members don't necessarily get a chance to talk to each other. But what I love about live streaming is the chat that goes on. I mean, it's hilarious, and you see people flirting with each other and all kinds of connections being made, and it's it's gorgeous. So there are. I don't know. There's pros and cons to both, and I and I've really enjoyed keeping on live streaming, even though we don't have to anymore. So have you checked? Have there been any, you know, sort of long term relationships or marriages from the flirting that goes on? I, do you know, that's the question I'm going to put out there tonight. I'll ask. I think it's important to ask. You know, I think you know. Really, they should have you playing at the wedding. So, you know, that's only fair. <laughs> yeah. Any babies? Any babies on the? <laughs> any live streaming babies? Yeah, you possibly don't want to know all the details. <laughs> Let's turn the cameras off, please. For yes. Yes. Uh, yes. No, it's, but it's yeah, it's a lovely, it's a lovely thing to be able to do in in tandem. I think. 
Fantastic. Fantastic. And you guys have got a, a really kind of busy run up to coming to Deepdale. I know that Deepdale is clearly the peak of all of those, you know, events, but absolutely. But uh, no, you've got you've got a hellishly busy uh, calendar over the next couple of months. Heavenly, I think you'll find. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I've actually got a quite a quite a few weeks now to be able to prepare, which is lovely. Yeah. Um, but yes, Kath and I have got a 20 date tour and Deepdale, I think, is the number of five or six something like that Somewhere but then we're all, i wish we could stay for the weekend but we can't because we're, we're playing in cambridge on the night after and then we're well, just chuffed to manage to fit you in in that program because you're going to so many venues it's uh it's brilliant and it's just worked really well that we can sort of almost make it a one of the nights of the tour which is fantastic yeah it's brilliant and it'll be lovely for us to have a festival in a, in amongst all the other more conventional or there's actually quite a nice variety there's sort of art centers and that really different venues we're playing quite a few churches so to have it's, it's a real it's a real mix it'll be lovely well Catherine of course played last year in the, uh, in the brick barn and um she's coming back with her band this time so it's going to be uh, it's going to be quite nice and she went down an absolute storm people loved her sort of uh, witty comments and stories in between all the songs so uh, um it's really lovely that she's she enjoyed it so much that she's coming back that's fantastic and chris is very chuffed it's one of the highlights of her year i think she talks about it a lot she's, that's good that's yeah, really excited about coming it's <laughs> she's hanging on about how the food no was pressure as well. but <laughs> the, there's lots of lovely um lovely eats as well as everything else so it's like uh that's always such a nice i love festivals and i love festival food i think it's got so much better in the last sort of 20 years or so it feels like it's become as much a kind of gastronomic celebration as a as a musical one so so yeah i think it's funny isn't it like you know we don't technically we really shouldn't be people who love outdoor festivals in the uk because we just the weather's so bloody unreliable but for some reason we seem to have gone hey let's just embrace this and do it properly you know and uh and um yeah i don't know like even festival toilets have improved although th- you know there's still some great examples where they haven't <laughs> um but um but you know like, i don't know what it is we've just decided well if we're going to get soaking wet uh we want to a listen to some brilliant music and b really eat well and uh, c drink well so you know um if if we have all of those things then sitting in our anoraks um in a slightly soggy chair is not the end of the world um as long as we've uh, we've got three of the f- four things you know sun is good but you know like it's not absolutely necessary to enjoy a festival in the uk i don't know what it is it's bizarre isn't it oh yeah i think it's part of our maybe it's part of our national psyche somehow I've, I've stoical got memories of of picnics in the rain yeah sitting around just like, no but we are going to have fun but i mean if you waited for the weather here you just never do anything so that is that is very true that is very true so you might as well just get on with it and we've had some We've had some festivals where people are clearly were getting sunburned and other festivals where even their underwear was wet, you know. So, you know, it's like, who knows which one it's going to be. You just have to wait and see. The Brick Barn, I think you'll, I think you'll quite like the Brick Barn. I think it'll uh, suit your, your music beautifully. So I think that'll be great. Really be great. So you are you working on on a more sort of music right now? Are you writing at the moment, or are you pre- prepping? Well, I've had um, an unbelievably productive winter. Out of almost nowhere, I found myself in a sort of fever fit, writing unbelievable amounts of songs, quite unexpectedly, um, but very happily. Um, I think it was partly because I've I've been collaborating with someone with a bass player who's just. We just had this kind of creative explosion. It was just brilliant. And I think that often happens. Sometimes you meet somebody who, and your creative frequencies just create something that's greater than the sum of your parts, you know? Yeah. So um, I've been working with him, John Thorne, and we've created all these these demos together, but I've managed to um, find a producer to work with on my next record, which I haven't done for, this will be album number six for me. And I only ever worked with another producer on the second record so and that was 20 years ago I worked with Ken Nelson who had worked with Coldplay and Kings of Convenience I went up to Liverpool um, and recorded at Par Studios with him and it was an incredible experience but a very expensive one and yeah yeah uh, and I learned a lot from him but I've mainly been recording in here to be honest Most, all the other records I've done pretty much on my own 
creative terms. Um, but this one, I'm really excited to be working with someone else. So I'm going to be working with him, this new producer, at the end of the year. So we've blocked out a period of time at uh, the end of November, beginning of December. But we're going to be recording it live. Which is just great. I'm so excited about it. Um, so John and I are going to go there and throw it all together. But we've got 21 songs at the moment. So that's another reason I'm really looking forward to working with a producer. It's like someone with it's another pair of ears who can say, let's cut that, cut that, focus on this. Because at the moment, it's like children. I love all of them. So this could be a triple album almost. I'm trying to avoid that scenario. <laughs> that was slightly overindulgent. Um, I think I need a very good prune. Um, but just to be able to work with someone else will be, it's, it's, I'm very excited about it. And I'm, it's a, it's a big exercise in trust as well. Having been autonomous for this long as well, I'm quite aware of my own, um, you know, keeping my claws on things tendencies. So I'm, I'm working on relaxing and opening and letting things go. <laughs> and, and, and the writing you're doing with uh, Catherine, are, are we likely to see an album kind of, uh, a, a, you know, a, a partnership I, I album there? What's going to happen? I think, I think a couple of these co-writes may end up on her next one, which is wonderful for me. I feel very privileged and honoured for that. I, but I don't, I don't, until it's done, who knows? Yeah. Um, but I'd love to make a record with Catherine. It'd be great. We've got quite a few songs in the bag now that we've co-written. One, of, one that she wrote with me here, ended up on my last record so um we sort of do this reciprocal exchanges and you put the material where it works best you know yeah um we'll see i don't know but we very exciting we, we wrote a lovely song last week i just think it's beautiful at, at midnight <laughs> it was like i was right at the end of a trip of doing lots of very boring admin for the tour and it was right at the end of the visit and i was like can we try and write something as well? Because that would be really, really nice. And it was, but we were knackered and it was right at the end of everything else. And maybe because of that, it, it just this lovely thing fell out. It was just great. Brains work in strange ways, don't they? So, you know, like you just never quite know. So, yeah. But, no, sometimes um, you kind of have to come at it sideways. And, um, yeah, definitely. But, yeah. Well, really lovely to chat with you, Polly. Thank you so much. I hope your live, uh, live session goes really well and enjoy that. Thank you. And we really look forward to seeing you in a couple of months' time in the Brick Barn with Catherine. And uh, you've got Matt Watson, a local artist, uh, playing just before you as well. And he's very excited about playing before you guys so that's going to be very cool so yeah I, I hope I hope the recording and stuff all goes really well and the rest of the tour goes well and we'll see you in a couple of weeks time a couple of months time even a couple of months time yeah couple yeah no don't time. say that my heart is stopped <laughs> <laughs> what where are we going <laughs> yeah no really yeah we'll we'll be rolling in in our tour van and if we um and if we play a little sort of snippet of one of your songs which which one would you choose I would say maybe back of your hand it's quite a back of your hand fantastic yeah. well thank you again and keep well and we'll talk to you soon lovely thanks jason you know i nearly stayed home tonight i've been burning the candle both ends been a trail in my paws in the sticky dark ponds of some special old friends water and wine casting my line back forth out there again and so i scraped on my face with some hair of the dog from the night before and i'm amazed at the grace of the barn and the poise of his steady free paw vodka and gin that's when my roving eye bumps into yours i'm gonna write down my number I am chatting with Matt Watson, a.k.a. The Secret Helicopters, or do you prefer it the other way around? The Secret Helicopters, you know a.k.a. Matt Watson. 
I don't know. It's got to a point where I think it's kind of the two things run alongside one another now. They are sort of synonymous. Yeah, Matt Watson is a secret helicopter. The secret helicopter is Matt Watson. And Matt Watson also used to be in a band called Huck. Um, I've got to that age <laughs> where I've got so many things behind me. I'm kind of just playing bits from all of these projects now. So That's it's cool. me. Yeah, but I'm playing material by Huck, by myself, solo, and the Secret Helicopters project now. Excellent. Well, Matt is joining us on Thursday <laughs> of the festival, and he's listed as the Secret Helicopters Ooh. hyphen Matt Watson. Yeah, that's that sort of catch, catch all. There we go. He is he's the first artist of the of the festival this year. Come on. He is opening the festival. Following him will be Polly Pullersma. And then yeah. Catherine Williams and her band. So yes. a bloody good Thursday evening, I think we could safely mm. say. How do you feel about being the first act of Deepdale Festival 2023? Exciting. Because I'm, I'm an old familiar, really. Do I get to cut a ribbon? We could probably find one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, you know, we'll nice. put, on, we'll I mean, put that on our list. Me, knowing you guys over the years and, and watching the festival grow, it's been a, a pleasure. So it's always a pleasure. And that's for me the one. And it's going to be a pleasure because of the artists that follow on for me on that, that evening with Catherine and Polly. So I'm just as excited. I always enjoy playing Deep Dale. My favourite, I think. You don't have to blush. It's OK. <laughs> well, you know, uh, yes, a significant proportion of that is down to Chris. and the Yeah, Chris's team. passion and, and your passion and, and the crew and the team there, you know. It's brilliant. And I've watched it every year just grow with all these different artists. And it's, you're, you're a, a North Norfolk secret that's slowly seeking out into the rest of the sort of consciousness of, of the music scene, I guess. I, I think it. the nice thing for me is that we haven't had to go, we haven't had to grow the festival massively in terms of number of people Yeah, to grow the, uh, the range of artists that we've had, if you said to me. And so we've, yes. we've, you know, we've got the most lovely, really wonderful, incredibly talented artists coming. And the really nice thing is, is that we haven't had to get to the point where we've got tens of thousands of people in a field to be able to justify that. We've got to the yeah. point where we've got people like Catherine and Polly coming, yourself, you've got Morgan Way, we've got, you know, Leisure Society, we've got India Electric Company and people like that, Michelle it's Stoddart. It's great to see Jess Morgan coming back out and playing. Jess is coming, Jess is coming. Yeah. It's going to be lovely because she headlined our first festival in 2017. Gosh, was it that long ago? Yeah. So, um, yeah, Jess is great. So it's really nice to see she's out playing again. Yeah, no, it's lovely. We went to see her at the Arts Centre the other night. Uh, she played a few songs well, John Osborne did uh, his uh, new Blur album, Spoken Word piece, which was very funny. So it's oh, his, life, his life talking about all the various different Blur albums. How is the creative process going? Is it, are you enjoying your various different guises? Yeah. I mean, I came and did what I would still term as an experiment <laughs> last year with using electronics and a laptop and drum loops and all sorts of things which uh, some worked lovely, some, mm, but, you know, uh, I wanted to try it. I'm not doing that this year, um, purely because I actually found that th th I can give the passion and the enjoyment the most with me and a guitar or a selection of guitars this time. But the, the, the technology kind of felt it took things away for, from it for me. So yeah, I stripped the songs back. But the creativity at home and in the studio is... I've, I've got a backlog of stuff I, I need to go back and remember how to do and finish. And it's it's a constant sort of rolling thing now. So I'm really enjoying it. Some of it's going to be more stripped back again, a bit more old map, and some of it may not be. I don't know. But I've got a backlog. I've got a hard drive just full of, of songs. How does the cre creative process work for you? Do you? Is it quick or is it like long and, you know, painful? <laughs> Suffering artist. I'm not a yeah. suffering artist, put it that way. Sometimes it's quick. The, the initial ideas are often quick. And I'll record things to my phone or I'll record things to a little digital recorder I've got. Some tracks, the, the secret helicopter stuff is always more involved because that's the point of it. So that takes longer. 
but then other songs come together in a the basic idea and structure of a song could come together in, in half an hour 20 minutes if it's something that i've been and i've got i've always got ideas floating around jason yeah it's just, <laughs> my head's constantly you're trying to say it's thinking, a scary place yeah so there's no head. one way that i tend to do it now the secret helicopter stuff is more based around production and the recordings like it's more of a project around that but some of the songs have transferred to a live situation and other stuff yeah me and the guitar and yeah. and soul and heart that's so with all of these different bit. projects what track am i going to play so that people know kind of what to expect well now you've really put me on the spot haven't you i've got to try and remember my own music <laughs> i didn't think that would be the hardest bit I have of actually, i've actually got a i've got a massive piece of paper here with a huge set list of uh, all of the songs that i know that i can still play and sing i am going to suggest that you play the song outside by okay. Matt Watson, more, um, just because it's it's. I really love that song. I'm really proud of it. Actually, it was a kind of one-off project I did with the local studio. Uh, it features Mark Howes on guitar from Dove and Bow Weevil, and we did a really cool video where I kind of looked like a, a weird version of Doctor Who disappearing into a time-traveling suitcase in the video. So definitely check that out. Yeah, outside. Um, it's one I'm really proud of. It, it, it tells a story with the lyrics, which is something I've always tried to do, even with the secret helicopter stuff. So yeah, put that one on. Brilliant. Okay, we will we will do that Thursday night. In case you haven't checked it out on our website, yeah, the wonderful Kathy is, Williams and Polly. It's going to be lovely with uh, with Polly and Catherine, and yeah, just a really great way to start the festival. And um, yeah, we look forward to seeing you then. All right. Thank you. Cheers, man. Thank you. Horses greet the land and the tree, the trees, they talk to me. I hear whispers through the leaves, branches reaching out to breathe, but they don't know where I'm from. They can't hear me to them, I'm gone, I'm on the outside the cave. See me to them, I'm gone, I'm on the outside looking in the sky, the sky, it makes me cry, an eagle glides out of sight, butterfly wing brings thunder, light and the rain, the rain, it follows me, clears away. Dirty earth brings life, hope, death and birth But they don't know where I'm from They can't hear me to them, I'm gone I'm on the outside looking in I am chatting to Phoebe Austin and she is part of the AWM TV which is Alter Wahlberg's sort of collection of artists that he thinks that we should know about. And he takes Sunday morning in, on the Orchard stage and presents to our wonderful festival goers at Deep Dell Festival um, a group of artists who he thinks are, are awesome. And Phoebe is one of those. And I think, Phoebe, you win the you win the youngest performer this year, probably. So uh, congratulations on that. Uh, you know, and um, it's going to be lovely having you with us. Have you ever been to Deepdale Festival before? No, I haven't. I've, I'm, I'm not a very festival person a lot of the time. I'm quite a, uh, quite a need-to-be-at-home person, uh, Got you. If, you can, if you can say that. But I'm, I'm branching out a lot more recently as I'm getting older and um, looking forward to having some new experiences. Fantastic. So, and, and, you know, do you know how many songs and stuff you'll be playing? Is as Alton sort of defined that to you? Do you know what sort of where you're set? Um, I I have a rough idea. Yeah. Um, 
not not set in stone one I'm, I'm a bit of a last minute person unfortunately that's okay I think you're allowed to be if you're a, uh you know if you're a performer I think that's perfectly allowed that's good and and what how would you describe your music how, you know what what will people ex- can it, what can people expect from your performance um I get asked this question a lot and I think it's a difficult one because um I I tend to lean kind of folky in ways and then poppy in ways and it's kind of like a weird meld of genres because I grew up listening to so many different things but all I can say is that um my main passion and my main selling point as it were is the fact that I absolutely love writing songs and have had a lot of people tell me I'm good at it so um yeah good songwriting and um awkward awkward chats is what you can expect from me (laughs) (laughs) well don't worry uh Catherine Pretty, who you probably are, uh, are aware of, and if you're not, you should be. Um, she performed a couple of years ago at Deepdale, and um, I think we, you know, we all thought she was absolutely wonderful. But um, it was quite funny. She was saying she was sort of still getting used to that chatting between the songs and explaining the story and stuff. So I don't think it's something you need to worry about immediately. I think uh, get the body of work there, and and then you know sort of worry about the stories. You, even if you make those up separately to the songs about how those songs came about, I think that'll be absolutely fine. So uh, that's cool. And and how is the creative process for you? Are you one of those people who just is constantly got a brain full of songs that you just sort of blurt out and kind of become something bigger or is it a quite a you know drawing blood from a stone process um I think that really depends on um the time of the year for some reason actually uh okay I I go through stints of literal madness where I will not stop writing and my um my family and my partner they just absolutely hate it because I'll just disappear for like half an hour and then I'll come be like you've got to listen to these new five songs that I've just written and they'll be like we're in the middle of dinner like what are you doing um so yeah I definitely have long stints of that but then I also find that I have really long stints of just yeah trying to write and it's it is like trying to get blood out of stone it's 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 painful but I think um I think that just comes down to the fact that I I bleed myself dry creatively and then I need I need that frustration to drive me back into it. Got you. That makes sense. And and what what tends to come first, the words or the uh, or the, the 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 melody, sort of the uh, the the tune? Um, I think for me, it's usually words. Right. Uh, yeah, I I tend to uh, often I, I I'll hear a phrase. I'll be on my phone or I'll be watching TV or I'll be talking to someone and I'll hear a phrase and all of a sudden it'll be like click. And then it will just be like, I'll be on my phone, not listening to the person I'm talking to, writing something down. And then I'll go back and I'll kind of work it out through either my piano or with my guitar or even just sing it in my head like a lunatic. So, yeah, it's it's um, it's random. Sometimes I will get a melody and I will just sit in a corner of a room being like into my phone. like ha, ha, ha. So, yeah, it's a uh, it's a variation, but usually words what's more enjoyable for you is it the the process of creating the songs or is it performing them oh gosh um I don't know because they are such different ends of the spectrum I think for me writing is such an integral part of my day-to-day life like if if I couldn't write I would be a nightmare I think I just I it's the only way I can process a lot of things that happen um but then when it comes down to performing it's just seeing people's reaction for the first time it's it's this it's unmatched so um yeah I think I think both have their absolute like upsides and I think um for me I think I find writing more comfortable but I I definitely enjoy performing a lot and have done since a very young age fantastic Excellent. Well, we are really looking forward to you being part of Deep Dell Festival. Really looking forward to it, and we uh, we will we will all enjoy the AWMTV sort of sets 
um out on a sun on sunday morning in the orchard um there'll there's yoga first then there's you know sort of very calming meditation bowls and then then am uh, awm tv come on and um yes and uh, and entertain so by that point people have sort of nested and they've created their space and they've got their first pint and they're looking forward to um looking forward to the music ahead so it'll be great to have you as part of deepdale festival it'll be really good what track should I play that would sort of, you know, give people a hint of what's what's to come? Um, well, I think that you should play my newest track, um, which is a song called Crossfire that came out in May. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. That's really lovely to chat with you, Phoebe. And we will see you at the end of September. When you tell me that you're done Making old sounds, putting me down Did you mean it when it went down That you wished you could have run Cause now my mind is saying chatting with Lewis from Toast Poetry. Many of you will have seen Toast at, well, many events, uh, but you will have seen them at Deepdale previously uh, when they made people cry um, in a good way rather than a bad way, but they made people cry with their free poems that they created. Basically, you go along, you have a chat with them, you tell them a, you know, a particular story or information. And if you can't really think of that, they ask you some very good questions and they create these amazing poems um, and people take them away. And then you see them crying fairly shortly afterwards. And it's very lovely to see. But they also perform a very funny um, sort of slam poetry where Daisy destroys Lewis in front of the uh, the public. So uh, that always um, always goes down well. Last festival in uh, 2022, they came uh, on the Friday. This year, they are booked for both Friday and Sunday, and we're really looking forward to them joining. They will be they will be uh, in the orchard uh, writing poems, and then they're going to be performing on the courtyard stage at various points, doing uh, their sort of slam poetry, which is which is great and, and performing stuff. So, how, how how is toast poetry going? Are you enjoying? doing the because you guys do lots of stuff and you have your own events and stuff and everything don't you so yeah so um hello hi jason uh 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 yes i'm lewis um and i'm one of the directors of toast poetry which is a tiny poetry company based in norwich and um yeah we do lots of different things so like primarily the thing we do is that every month we um have a live poetry show in norwich um usually at the refectory cafe which is uh, in Norwich Cathedral it's this beautiful sort of vaulted ceiling sort of like sanctified place that we um we bring down with silly poems and some slightly dirty jokes and some of the best poets from all over the world and so right now we're on our sort of summer break which means that we aren't actually having a break we're doing a tour so uh, we've been uh in Norwich doing the Lord Mayor's Parade um, doing poems for the good people of Norwich. We are um, off to Kings Lynn to uh, do some free poems for them. We've been down to Milden Hall in Suffolk. Uh, we are doing a big show in Great Yarmouth um, on uh, the 29th of July. Then we're going to Sheringham. At some point in between that, we're going to Newmarket. I think we're going to Wilderness as well. Um, and then our whole summer ends 
um, with the beautiful Deepdale Festival, uh, where we spend two days. I mean, like, th- this doesn't really work for the podcast, but in air quotes, working, i.e. hanging out at a beautiful festival, drinking Moongazer beer. Um, we might even camp this year. It's, it's a big step for us. We're not really camping people. Uh, particularly um, if you've got a small puppy. So that yeah, could be really um, interesting. And then we'll um, be watching music and performing poems. So yeah, that, that's basically what Toast does. We tour around the UK and Norfolk specifically, writing poems to people, reading poems to people. And it's a delight. And it's it's a very like audience focused thing. We think about the poems like, um, you know, there's a, I think it's like a Betjeman thing that he said that like most poetry, most people aren't interested in poetry because most poetry isn't interested in most people. We always look for poems that are interested in people. Um, we take poetry to people who were like, we think you're going to like this because this is a poem about love or this is a poem about your dog or this is a poem about like, even if it's about something like obscure, like quantum biology or something, we're like, there's something in this that you as, I don't know, a builder or an architect or a lawyer or a barista is going to understand and going to it's going to interest you. So that's our that's our basic philosophy. Yeah, yeah. I remember the the group of ladies who come to quite a lot of our events, and uh, they were sitting quite close to where you guys were writing the poems, and they were kind of quite. Um, I think they were quite kind of sceptical of you know mm. whether it would be worth coming to have them done and eventually I think what you or uh, um Daisy persuaded one of them that it would you know they couldn't really hurt to come and have a free poem yeah. and uh, I think after that they all then came and got the poems really because mm-hmm. they were sitting around reading them and all crying together which yeah. was kind of a, a really it, it, I, I thought it was kind of it was it was very funny but it was also very poignant of the fact that they mm. were you know they kind of been really sceptical and then they were oh actually yes we quite like this this is quite good so the the free poem stall that we do that we do at Deepdale um which is not a unique thing to us like there are other people who do it in various different ways but um it's as you described it really beautifully um it's the opportunity for someone, someone to come up to you and basically order a poem commission a poem about whatever they want um, so therein, the, the creativity, like whilst I'm not going to take anything away from me and uh, Daisy Henwood, who's the other director of Toast, um, the, you know, it is, it's a skill and it's an art to, to be able to hold that information and to put it in a form and to, to think about how to best put those words together. There is something deeply creative about our audience. I, mean, I always think that audiences are creative, right, for any art, whether it's you go into a gallery or it's you sitting uh you know listening to a folk musician or or it's it's listening to poetry or responding to poetry like it's a creative act in and of itself and so like i think we just sort of like pull on that those threads a little bit and we ask the right questions and that 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 we we take that skepticism and that actually leads to people being much more open than you would think um we don't take liberties we don't uh, you know, I always say, like, uh, we're writers, not therapists. We can break you apart. We can't put you back together. Go where you're comfortable. But, like, if you want to tell me something, you're probably never going to see me again. Like, it's going to be fine. And even if you do see me again, I'm probably not going to remember your poem because I wrote, you know, 60 others today. So it's 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 a both a deeply personal thing and something that someone can have a, a bit of an- anonymity in. Um, and it's delightful and especially the people at Deepdale who do it they come with an open-heartedness and a thoughtfulness and obviously at Deepdale they come from all different walks of life Um, but they they share a, a, a different a unique kind of creativity something that makes them good listeners good communicators and honestly, I think so many people just want to be listened to. And that's that's a that's a space that we provide with our free poem stall. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing it at um uh the Norwich Lanes, I think we met the first mm. time. And uh um yeah, and always uh and I think you wondered where on earth Burnham Deepdale was. And uh, as most artists who we first approached to come and uh, um perform there, um I remember the uh, the Shackleton trio lot. We were like, what, where? 
what are you talking about and mm. um they're now sort of stalwarts of our uh, of our regulars so uh yeah no it's funny it's sort of um developed and, and grown from there but uh no i'm really glad we discovered you and i'm really glad that you uh you have enjoyed the experience of being with us and will be back again with us it'd be great and it you know if people wanted to kind of hear you or see you guys do you have a youtube channel or uh you know instagram channel or something that they can kind of look up and just get a kind of a taster of what you guys do yeah. so um best place to find us is either on instagram so at toast poetry uk uh, or via our website toastpoetry.com um therein you can find the links to all the other things that we do um but yeah that is the that is the beating heart on the internet uh face of toast um because the other thing that we do is like whilst I, Lewis Buxton and Daisy Henwood um, are the directors and we, you know, we do a lot of the performing and the hosting and the writing of poems. We also really believe in creating a platform for other artists. Um, one of the artists we're working with at the moment, who I know uh, Deepdale know as a singer, Jess Morgan, yeah. um, is also a poet that we work with a lot. Um, and so there's some really beautiful like crossovers there and and Jess is someone that we want to platform because like, if you've ever heard her lyrics you'll understand what an incredible writer she is um this is not me trying to position poetry in any way above lyrics or lyrics above poetry i think they exist in one but they're so they're so interrelated you know you yeah, can't one gorgeous spectrum of of, of i'm a big six yeah. i'm a big six music listener and you know then that there's yeah. such there's just not there's not that line between poetry and music now no. you know the two are, you know bob dylan was a poet you know and and, and kind of and you know you listen to his uh particularly his earlier stuff his lyrics there when he was performing in greenwich village and stuff like that you know he was basically performing poetry with a with a guitar in hand and yeah, did, Jess, like... Jess did a lovely piece at um uh, at the Norfolk and Norwich Festival in the Speakeasy, where she did, yeah, uh, did her piece, and she's performing at Deepdale this year, which is wonderful because she headlined or one of the headliners of our first festival back in 2017. So oh, wow. you know, it's sort of really nice to kind of go back. So, but yeah, you've got all these incredible artists all over Norfolk who are creating amazing st stuff across that spectrum. And the lovely thing about Deepdale is that it introduces us to a different audience, right? It introduces poetry to people who are predominantly music fans um and uh and and so that that just allows for the idea that you know i don't believe in arts or music or poetry or anything to be a competition i always want it to be a community and that's the thing i've always seen reflected at at your festivals there are artists supporting one another there are producers like you engaging with us and the audience and everyone so it it doesn't become this sort of hierarchy of talent or intrigue or fame it's always a matter of like how are we best connecting with each other and it's delightful fantastic well we're really looking forward to your return to Deepdale we will see you on Friday the 22nd um, and on Sunday the 24th of September keep well and thank you for joining me thanks so much Jason it's been a pleasure thank you so much for listening to part one of the Deepdale Festival podcast 2023 this was part one of what will be four or five parts, and we hope you'll listen to the rest of them. If you'd like to know any more information about Deepdale Festival, the best place to look is deepdalefestival.co.uk. The event itself takes place on the 21st of September through to the 24th of September, and we host over 40 different artists on three different stages around the Deepdale site. It's a wonderful weekend with a heart of folk, but just generally great music. Come and join us. Skies all open wide, geese go high and over. Oh, now you're a beachcomber, fist full of sand fire, sea, lavender, sea, yeah.